I learned in this letter that Pedro returns from a tour for a visit this night. He is very well near by this. Not for your leagues off. A victory is twice itself when the achiever brings home full numbers. I find here that Pedro had bestowed much honor on a young singer named Claudio. Pedro has an uncle here in the scene will be very much glad of it. I pray you, is Senor Montana to return from the tour or not? What is he that you ask for, niece? My cousin named Senor Benedict. Oh, he's returned, and as pleasant as ever he was. I pray you, how many hath he killed in this tour? But how many hath he killed, for I promised ye all of his killing. Faith, niece, you tax Benedict too much, but you never meet with him. For he has done good service, my lady, in these tours. You have musty victual, and he hath helped to eat it. He is a valiant trenchman, he has an excellent stomach. And a good singer too, lady. A good singer to a lady, but what is he to a lord? A lord to a lord, a man to a man, all stuff with earnable virtue. Yes, he is no less than a stuffed man for the stuffing. Well, they're all mortal. You must not hear or mistake your cousin. This is the kind of merry war betwixt Benedict and her, but they never meet, and there's a skirmish of wit between them. Alas, he gets nothing by that. In our last conflict, four of us five of us went halting off, leaving the whole man governed with one. He wears his face, but as the fashion of the cap, it ever changes with the next block. I see, lady, the, the gentleman is not in your books. No, and he were, I would bring my study. But I pray you, who is his companion? He is in the most company of the right noble than Claudio. <laughs> oh, Lord, he will hang upon him like a disease. He is sooner caught with his stones, and the taker runs presently mad. God help the noble Claudio. If he have caught the bandit, it will cost him a thousand dollars ere be cured. You will never run mad, niece. No, not till the hot January. See yet without spectacles, and I see no such matter. 
<laughs> There's her cousin. She were not possessed with a fury that exceeds her as much in beauty as the first of May doth the last of December. But I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? I would scarce trust myself, though I had sworn the contrary, if Hero would be my wife. It has come to this. Has the world not one man but he will wear his cap in suspicion? Shall I never see a bachelor of three score again? What secret hath held you here that you fall not with Leonardo? I would, your grace, would constrain me to tell. I charge thee on thy allegiance. You hear, Count Claudio, I can be as secret as a dumb man. I would have you think so. But on my allegiance, mark you this, on my allegiance. He's in love! <laughs> <laughs> with Nero, Leonardo's short daughter. <laughs> or the summer daughter. Oh, like the old tale, my lord. It is not so, nor twas not so, but indeed, God forbid it should be so. My passion changed not shortly. God forbid it should be otherwise. Be man if you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. You speak this to catch me in, my lord. By my troth, I speak my thought. In faith, my lord, I spoke mine. And by my two tropes and faiths, I spoke mine. That I love her, I feel. That she is worthy, I know. That I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how she should be worthy, is the opinion that fire cannot melt out. Thou wast ever an obstinate heretic in a spite of beauty. And never could maintain his part but in the force of his will. That a woman conceives me, I thank her. <laughs> that she brought me up, my life I give her most humble thanks. But all women shall pardon me. Because I will not do them the wrong to mistrust any, and I will do myself the right to trust none. The fine is, I will live a bachelor. I will see the air I die with pale of love. <laughs> with anger, with sickness, or with hunger, my lord, but not with love. If I do, hang me in a bottle like a cat and shoot at me. The time shall try, and time the savage bull doth bear the yoke. The savage bull may. But if ever the sensible Benedict bear it, pluck off the bull's horns and set them in my forehead. That should never happen, now what's behind that? Nay, if who could have not spent all his quiver in Venice, that shall quake for this shirt. I look for an earthquake to them. My lord, you may now do me some good. My love is thine to teach. To teach it, but how? For you to see how to act it, to learn any hard lesson that may do me some good. Have me not any something. No child but your own. She's her only heir. Dost thou affect her, Claudia? Oh, my lord, when you went onward on this ended action, I looked upon her with a singer's eye that liked but had a rougher task at hand than to drive liking to the name of love. Now I am returned, and that Torthops have left their places vacant. And from the room comes soft, thronging, delicate desires, all promoting me on how fair young hero is. If thou dost look her here, cherish it, and to her mother I'll awake, and she shall be thine. <sighs> how sweetly you do to love, minister. And it was love's grief by his complexion, less, less my liking my too sudden seem. I would have salvaged it with the longer trees. What need the bridge much broader than the flood? I will fit thee with the remedy. I know we shall have reverence, and I will play thy part in some disguise, and tell fair hero I am Claudio, and in her bosom will unclasp my heart with the strength of the count of my amorous tale. Not to her mother I will break, and she shall be thine. <laughs> Who? The most exquisite Claudio. 
As I was standing out on the patio, come with me, your brother, and Claudio, hands in hand, in sad conference. I went me by in the Arab, and then heard that Claudio should, that Hero should woo Petty Girl for himself, and having obtained her, give her to Count Claudio. Come, come, let us thither. This may prove food to my discontent. Let him stir, but all the glory of my overthrow. If I can cost him in any way, I bless myself every way. You are sure and will assist me? To the death, my lady. Shall I prove what's to be done? I'll wait upon your word. Was not young Jane here at supper? I suffer not. How tartly that gentlewoman looks? I can never see her but I'm heartburned an hour after. She <laughs> is of a very melancholy disposition. <laughs> the woman were made just the midway between her and Benedict. One is to like an image and says nothing, the other like my lady's eldest son, ever more tattling. With half of Benedict's tongue in Jane's mouth, and half of Jane's mouth in college. With a good leg, and a good foot, and money enough in his purse, a man could get any woman could get her a good will. Oh, by my troth, niece, thou shalt never get thee a husband, if thou be so sure of thy tongue. In faith, she's too cursed. Too cursed is more than cursed, therefore I shall ask his godson in that way. For said, God sends a cursed cow short horns, which cow too cursed, he sends none. So by being too cursed, God will send no horns. Just if you were to send me no husband, for the which bless him at my knees upon him every morning <coughs> and evening. <coughs> Lord, I could not endure a husband with a beard on his face. I'd rather lie in the lawn. You shall lay in our husband that hath no beard. And what should I do with him? Dress him my apparel and make him my waiting gentlewoman? <laughs> well, you know, I trust you will be ruled by your mother. Yes, Faith, it is my cousin's duty to make her to say, Mother, as it please you. But let him be a handsome fellow, or make another curtsy and say, Mother, as it please me. Well, niece, I hope to see you one day fitted with a husband. Not till God makes a man of other metal than of earth. The revelers are entering. Make good room. <laughs> And trust no agent, for beauty is a witch whose faith and charm babble into blood. Therefore, farewell, hero. Claudio! Yeah, man. Come, will you go with me? Whither? Even to the next willow tree, county. Tell me, in what fashion shall you wear the garland of? You must wear it one way to think of the fact you're hero. I wish him joy of her. Did you really think he would have served you thus? Will not leave. I will go. <laughs> now you strike like the blind man. It was the boy that me that. It was the boy that stole your meat, and now you'll beat the post. I will leave. Ah, uh, alas, poor hurt fowl. Now we will creep into the sedges. 
but that my lady Beatrice should know me and not know me? <laughs> Pay to his jester. Well, I'll be revenged as I may. Where's Claudia? Did you see him? I found him here as melancholy as a lodge in a warren. I told him, and I think I told him true, that your grace had gotten the goodwill of this young lady. I offered him my company to a willow tree, either to fashion him up a garland as being forsaken, or to bind him up a rod as being whipped. To be whipped was his fault. The flat transgression of a schoolboy, who, being overjoyed by finding a bird's nest, shows it to his companion, and he steals it. I but teach the birds to sing or restore them to the owner. The lady Beatrice said, poor lady. She said the gentleman she danced with says she's very wrong for you. <laughs> she misused me past the endurance of a block. My very visor began to assume life and scope with her. She claimed that I was Pedro's jester, that I was duller than a great thaw, huddling jest upon jest, that I stood like a man at a mark with a whole army shooting at me. Well, look, here she comes now. Oh, God. Here's a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady tongue. Come, be just come, be a blessed word of Benedict. Indeed, my lord. You have put him down, lady, you have put him down. So I should do not, you should do me, my lord, lest I should prove the mother of fools. I brought dear Claudio, whom you sent me to see. What for you said? Not sad, my lord. Been sick? Neither, my lord. He is neither sad, nor sick, nor merry, nor well, but something of that jealous complexion. Come, I would in the name of the fair girl is one, to her mother I have broken, and her good will obtain, and set a day of marriage, and God give thee joy. Good Lord, for alliance! Thus goes ever into the world, but I, I am sunburned. I may sit in a corner and cry, hi ho for a husband. <laughs> Why, my trust was a pleasant spirit, lady. Oh, my no means, she knocked all of the words out of Sue. She'd be an excellent wife for Benedict. Oh, if they were but a week and married, they would talk themselves mad. <laughs> when the lady Beatrice and Benedict in such a mounting affection with, the, with, a, with one another, if you three will minister such assistance, I will give you direction. My lord, I implore you. And I, my lord. And you too, gentle girl, I will do my modest office for you. I will help my cousin to a good husband. I will teach you how to humor your cousin that she shall fall in love with Benedict, and so practice on Benedict that he shall fall in love with her. Come in with me, and I will tell you my truth. Okay. Okay. Any cross, any impediment will be meant to symbol me. I am sick in this cousin's throne, and whatsoever comes of forward to fashion ranges, even him with mine. How canst thou cross this marriage? Not honestly, my lady, but so covertly that no dishonesty shall hear. Show me how. I think I told your ladyship a year since how much I am in favor of her slot best friend Tira. I remember. I can at any unseasonable instant of the night appoint her to look up at her lady's chamber with him. I'd like not to be the death of this marriage. The point is that lies in you to temper. Go you to your brother and spare not to tell him that I wronged his honor in marrying the re-unknown Claudia. So contaminated scale suck one as you like. What proof shall I make of that? Proof enough to misuse your brother, vex Claudio, undo Hero, and kill Leonata. Looking for any other issue? I I will endeavor anything. Go then, find me a meet hour to draw Pedro and Claudio alone. Bring them to see me at her lady's chamber window. Hear me call Ursula Hero, hear Ursula turn me Claudio. I will go fashion the matter that Hero shall be absent, and succeeding truth of Hero's disloyalty, and all the preparations shall be overthrown. I shall go presently learn the day of marriage. I do much wonder that one man, seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behavior to love, will, after he hath laughed at such shallow follies in others, become the argument of his own scorn by failing love. And such a man is Claudio. I have known when there was no music with him but the drum and the fife, and now he had rather hear the tabor and the pipe. He was wont to speak plain and to the purpose like an honest man and a soldier, and now his words are a very fantastical banquet to so many strange dishes. Shall I be so converted to see with these eyes? I cannot tell. I think not, but love may transform me to an oyster. And until he have made an oyster out of me, he, I, he will never make me such a fool. One woman is fair, yet I am well. Another is wise, yet I am well. Another virtuous, yet I am well. And until these graces be all in one woman, one woman 
shall not come in my grace. <laughs> Rich she shall be, that's for certain. <laughs> Mild or I'll none. Fair or I'll never look on her. <laughs> Virtuous uh, or leave me be. Uh, Virtuous or leave me be. And virtuous or leave me be. But uh, but she shall be rich, and until all these graces be in one woman, I shall not be with one woman. That is the answer. <laughs> oh, uh, Pedro and Monsieur Love, I will hide me in the neighbor. Happy? 
are they to hear their detractions and can put them to mending. They say the ladies fair. It is the truth, I can bear them witness. They say the lady is virtuous. It is so, I cannot reprove it. They say she is wise, yet for loving me. <laughs> By my throat. It is no addition to her wit, nor no great argument to her folly. I will be horribly in love with her. <laughs> I will be horribly in love with her. And I may have some wit, remnants of wit broken on me because I have railed so long against marriage. But doth not the appetite alter? Shall quips and sentences and these paper bullets of the brain awe a man from the career of his humor? No. The world must be peopled. <laughs> when I said that I would die a bachelor, I did not think I would live until I were married. Yeah, here's Beatrice by this day. She's a fair lady. I do spy some marks of love in her. <laughs> Sweet Beatrice, I thank you for your pains. Against my will, I sent in, bid you come to breakfast. I thank you. <laughs> I took no more pain for those thanks than you took to thank me. If it had been painful, I would not have come. You take pleasure then in the message. Yea, as much pleasure as one would take upon a nice point and choke a doll with all. You have no stomach, senor, fare you well. <laughs> uh, against my will, I am sent to bid you come into breakfast. Well, there's a double meaning in that. <laughs> Any pains? I took no more pains than you took pains to thank me. That's as easy as saying any pains I take for you are as easy as thanks. If I do not pity her, I am a villain. If I do not love her, I'm a fool. I will go get her picture. Now, Ursa, when Beatrice doth come, our talk must only be a Benedict. When I do name him, let it be that part to praise him more than ever man can learn. My talk of me must be how Benedict is sick in love with Beatrice. Of this matter is Cupid's crafty air of No, truly, Ursa, she's too disdainful. I know her spirits are as coy as haggards of the rock. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? So does Petro <laughs> and his love Claudio. And did they bid you tell her of it? They do treat me to acquaint in her a bit, but I do persuade them. And they love Benedict so entirely to risk some rustle of affection and never let Beatrice know of it. Doth not the gentleman deserve fully a fortunate bit, and there Beatrice shall couch by? Oh, God of love, I know he doth deserve as much as a man be yielding, but I do persuade them. They love Benedict so entirely. Nature never brings a woman's heart as proud as that Beatrice. She's so self deserved <laughs> Sure. I think so, and it was certainly not good if she knew who you are, lest she make us for him. Oh, you speak the truth, so he turns every man wrong side out and never thinks the honest truth of virtue, of which simple merit for him. Sure, sure, such carpeting is not commendable. But who did I tell her so? If I should speak to her, she would mock me into air. Therefore, let Benedict, like covered fire, consume only his eyes and waste inwardly. It would a better death than die with mock, which is as bad as die with tickle. Yes, tell her of it, see what she will say. No, rather I will go to Benedict to fight against his passion, and truly I'll devise some honest slanders, which is the best stain my cousin with. One doth not know what ill words may be put in liking. Well, do not do your cousin such wrong. She cannot be without true judgment. How, having so swift and excellent wit, as to surprise, as to refuse so rare a gentleman as Signor Benedict. Indeed, he hath an excellent good name. He earned it, ere he had it. When are you married? Why, every day tomorrow. Come, go in. I'll show thee some attires, which is the best of furniture tomorrow. Caught her heroes. So loving goes my hat. Some Cupid kills with arrows and some with traps. <laughs> what fire is this in mine ears? Can this be true? Stand I condemned for pride and scorn so much. Contempt for well and maiden pride of you. No glory lives behind the back of such. And Benedict, love on, I will requite thee, taming my wild heart to thy loving hand. Gallant, <laughs> <laughs> I am as I have been. To say I mean things were sadder. 
I hope you be in love. Hang him, Chura. There is no true drop of blood in him that can be truly touched with love. If he is sad, he wants money. I have the toothache. <laughs> draw it. Hang it. You must hang it first and draw it afterwards. And sign him for the toothache. Yet say I, he is in love. There is no occurrence of fancy in him. If he be not in love with some woman, there is no use believing old signs. Conclude, conclude, he is in love. Nay, but I know who loves him. That I know too, I warn one that knows him not. Yes, and despite his ill conditions, dies for him. Yet this is no charm for the toothache. Come, walk with me, Leonardo. I have studied eight or nine wise words to speak with you that these hobby horses must not hear. <laughs> and I'd like to break with her about Beatrice. Tis even so. Hero and Ursula will have by this played their parts with Beatrice, and the two bears will not fight one another when they meet. <laughs> My brother, God save you. Good then, sister. If you leisure, sir, that I may speak with you. In private? If it please you, yet Claudio may hear for us, we give concern to him. What is the matter? I can hither tell you the lady is disloyal. Who, hero? Even to Leonardo's hero, your hero, every man's hero. Disloyal. The word is too good to paint out for wickedness. May this be so? I think it not. If you do not trust me again, then I will show you more, and when you have seen more and heard more, but see you accordingly. If I see anything tonight, why I should not marry in congregation, there will I shame her. As I wooed for thee to obtain her, I will join with you to disgrace her. I will despair to no further until you are my witnesses. Fair coldly, but till midnight, let the issue show itself. Will the day and to her return? Oh, mischief strangely thwarted. Are you good, man? Mm -hmm. uh, true. Nay, I to see that she took up her foundation body and soul. Nay, thou art punishment too good for her. If she should have any allegiance to the being chosen for the family's watch. We'll give her a charge, <laughs> Mr. Dogberry. This is a charge. <laughs> You shall comprehend all bigger men if it as men stand in the family tree. How if you'll not stand? Well, then, take no note of him, but let him go. And presently come the rest of the watch together and thank God you're rid of the man. If you will not stand, he is bidden to give another family subject. True. And you are to marry with none but the family subject. You shall also make no noise in the streets, for for the watch to babble and talk is most powerful to go and not to be in there. If you meet a priest, you may suspect him by virtue of your office to be no true man. If we know, if I know him to be a thief, shall I not lay hands on him? In the most peaceful way. If you do meet a thief, it's a show himself what he is and steal out of your company. <laughs> if you hear a child cry in the night, you must call the nurse and bid her steal it. How if the nurse will be asleep and will not hear me? Why then? The part of this, at least the child wakes and was crying. This is very true. Well, masters, good night. There be a matter of which chances call up me. Good night. Masters, you hear our charge. <laughs> One word more, men. I pray you watch upon the Atlanta's door. Good wedding be tomorrow. The great clothes be tired. Be vigilant. Get some of this 
feels kind of Benedictus, and lay to your heart, for it is the only thing first of all. Benedictus, why Benedictus? You have some moral in this Benedictus. Combined with my trope, no, you have no moral meaning. Indeed, if I can think in my heart of thinking that you are in love, that you could be in love, that you will be in love. Now that Benedict is become a man, he thinks that you be in the eyes of all other women do. What pace is this that thy tongue keeps? Not a false gallop. Help me get dressed with cause for this song. <laughs> Come, Francis, be brief. Only to the plain form of marriage, and then you shall recount the particular duties afterwards. You can pay every word to the lady. No. To be married to her, Francis, you come to marry her. You can pay her to be married to this count? I do. If any of you know any inward impediment on why you should not seek a joy, charge you on your soul of the other. Who are you, Benedict? Then, my lord, know you any Claudio? I dare make an answer or not. Oh, what men may do, what men dare do, not knowing what they do. The count out interjections such as ha, he, ho, oh, ho, and whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Francis, stand by. Leonardo, with free and unconstrained soul, you will give me this maid, your daughter. As freely, son, as God gave her me. Lure me noble thankfulness. Barely not. Take her back! Give not this rotten orange to your friend! She is but a sign of the semblance of her honor. All you that see her, that she were a maid. By these exteriors show that she is none. What do you mean, Claudio? Not to marry, not to knit my soul to an approved woe. I never tempted her with word too large, but as a brother to a sister, I show bashful sincerity and calmly love. Can I seem otherwise to you? I don't need seem it. I will write against it. Is he well that he doth speak so wide? Pedro, why not speak to you? Why should I speak? I stand this honor to lick my dear friend to a common stale. Are these things spoken, or do I but dream? Damn, these things are spoken, and these things are true. This looks not like a nuptial. <laughs> true, oh God! You know, stand I here? Is this Pedro? Is that base heroes? Or our eyes our own? All this is so. But what of this, my lord? Will you but move one question to your daughter? And by that motherly and kindly power that you have in her, bid her answer truly. I charge thee do so, as thou art my child. Oh, God defend me! How am I beset? What kind of catechizing call you this? To make you answer truly to your name! Is it not hero with the blood that name does any reapproach? Marry that king hero. Hero itself can blot out hero's virtue. What man was he that talked with you yesternight at your window betwixt twelve and one? Now, if you are a maid, answer to this. I talk with no man at that hour, my lord. Why, then you are no maiden. Leonard, I'm sorry you must hear this upon my honor, but me, my sister, in this grieved boy did see her, hear her talk with a ruffian at her chamber window. Oh, hero, what a hero hadst thou been, if half thy outward grace had been placed about thy thoughts and counsel of thy heart. But fare thee well, most foul, most fair, thou pure and petty and pious purity, for thee I'll lock up all the gates of love, and never, and from my eyelids, shall conjecture hang, to turn all the thoughts of beauty into thoughts of harm, and never shall it more be gracious. Hath no man's dagger here a point for me? Oh no, hero, wherefore sing you now? Come, let us go. These things come not to light. Mother, her spirit. Uh, how doth the lady? Dead, I think. Come on, hero, why, hero? On, Benedict Francis. O oh, fate, take not away thy heavy hand. Death is the fairest cover for her shame. That may be wished for. How oh, now, hero? Dost thou look up? Nay, yeah, wherefore should she not? Wherefore? Wherefore, why doth not every earthly thing cry shame upon her? Could she here deny the story that is printed in her blood? Do not live, hero. Do not open thine eyes. Why wast thou ever so lovely in my eyes? Oh, she is fallen, to put a pin of ink, that the wide sea hath too few drops to wash her clean again. Madam, be patient. For my part, I am so 
a tired and wonder I know not what to say. Oh, on my soul, my cousin is alive. Lady, were you her bedfellow last night? No, truly not, although until last night I've been 12 months been her bedfellow. Confirmed, confirmed. Oh, this is stronger made than which was before barred with ribs of iron. Would the siblings lie? Would Claudio lie who loved her so? That speaking of her fullness, washed it with tears? Hence from this, let her die. Pause a while. For I've only been sent so long to the way to this course of fortune. What man do you know I I know that you accuse me, I know not. If I, more than, if I know more than any man alive, which made in modesty dog for it, let all my sins lack mercy. Oh, my mother, who though I first would know my men at that hour, on me, who then I yesterday maintained the taint of words with any creature, refused me, hate me, tortured me to death. Some strange misprison in those siblings. Two of them have the very bent of honor, but if their wisdom be misled in this, if the practice of it lives in Jane, the sister, whose spirit toils in the frame of villainy. Oh, Leonardo, let Francis advise you, and as you know, my love is very much unto Pedro and Claudio, but I will deal in this as secretly and justly as your soul should with your body. Being that I flow in grief, the smallest twine may lose me. Lady Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yea, and I will weep a while longer. I will not desire that. You have no reason to, I do it freely. Surely I do believe your fair cousin was wrong. How much the man would deserve of me that would write her. Is there a way to show such friendship? A very even way, but no such friend. May a man do it? A man's office, but not yours. I, I do love nothing so much in the world as much as you. Is that not strange? It is strange as the thing I know not. And where it's possible you say that I love nothing so much as you, yet believe me not, and yet I lie not, I confess nothing, nor I deny nothing. I am sorry for my cousin. By my sword, Beatrice. Thou lovest me. Do not swear by it and eat it. I will swear by it that you love me and make him eat it that says I love not you. Will you not eat your word? With no sauce that can devise to it. <laughs> I protest, I love thee. Why then God forgive me? What offense, sweet Beatrice? You sing me in a happy hour. I was about to protest that I love you. And do it with all thy heart. I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. Come, bid me do anything for thee. You tell Claudio. <laughs> you kill me tonight, farewell. What, Beatrice? I am gone while I am here. There is no love in you. I pray you let me go. Beatrice. In faith I will go. We'll be friends first. You have rather be friends with me than to fight with mine enemy. Is Claudio thine enemy? Is he not approved in the height of villain that hath slandered, scorned, dishonored my kinswoman? Oh, God, that I were a man. What, bear to take hands and with public accusation, uncovered slander, Unmeditated rancor, oh God, that I were a man, I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Hear me, Beatrice. Top of the man out of window, a proper saying. Terry, Beatrice. Sweet hero, she is wrong, she is slandered, she is undone. Beatrice. Not I were a man for his sake, or that I had a friend would be a man for my sake. But man heard his mouth and his courtesies, valor and compliment, and men are turned into tongue and trim ones too. His mouth valiant is Hercules, who tells a lie and swears by it. I cannot be a man with wishing, therefore I will die a woman with grieving. Beatrice, I love thee. You said for my love's mother wakened by swearing by it. Think you in your soul that Claudio has wronged your cousin. Yea, as sure as I have fought her. Enough. I am engaged. <clears throat> I will challenge him. I will kiss your hand, and so I leave you. By this hand, Claudio shall render me a dear account. As you hear of me, so think of me. Go, come for your cousin. I must say she's dead, so farewell. Master <laughs> Khan.
I guess not. I will make good how you dare, with what you dare, and when you dare. You have killed a sweet and innocent lady, and her death shall fall heavy on you. Let me hear from you. Well, I will meet you so I may have good cheer. What a feast, what a feast. Sir, your wit and as well, it goes easily. I'll tell thee how Beatrice praised thy wit the other day, as she did an hour to get a trench shape, that particular virtue. And with a sigh concluded, thou wast the properest man in America. For the wit, she wept heartily and said she cared not. Fare you well, boy. You know my mind. I will leave you now to your gossip-like humor. You break jests as braggarts do their blade, blades, which God be thanked, hurt not. Pedro, for your many courtesies, I thank you. I must discontinue your company. Your sister, Titus, you also have among you killed a sweet and innocent lady. For my lord, Blackbeard, there. Ooh. He and I shall meet, and until then, peace be with him. He is in earnest. Most profound earnest, and I'll warrant you for the love of Beatrice. And he hath challenged me. Oh, sincerely. <laughs> Did he not say my sister was hiding? Come you, sir. If justice cannot tame you, she shall near way more reason than her bounty. Nay, you be a cursed hypocrite, which you must be loved to. How now brought you about? Taken up their offenses, my lord. Mary, sir, she has committed false report. Moreover, she is a slander. Secondarily, she has spoken on truth. Sixth, the last of Shakespeare. Bloody lady! <laughs> Thirdly, she has verified on just things, and to conclude, she's a lying knave. First, I ask thee what she has done. Third, I ask thee what is her offense. Sixth, and lastly, I ask thee what, what you lay in her charge, and to conclude, why is she committed? But rightly reasoned in his own division, and by my troth, there is only one meaning well suited. What is your offense for your bounty or answer? This learned constable is too kind to understand. <laughs> Pedro, let me go no further to my answer. I have deceived even your own very eyes what your wisdoms cannot discover. You shall fools have brought to light. Who in the night overheard me confessing that pain your sister and kept me a slander hero. How you were brought into the orchard and saw me court Ursula in hero's garden. The lady is dead upon mine and gained upon accusation, and I briefly desire nothing but the reward of my when this speech like iron through your blood? I've drunk poison while it's uttered. And my sister did set you up to this? Yeah, and paid me richly for the practice of it. She has been framed of treachery and fled on this villainy. Hero, now that image both appear in rare semblance that first I loved it. When time and place shall serve. But I am an ass! <laughs> <laughs> Which is the villain? Let me see her eyes, so when I know another woman like this, I shall avoid her. Which one of these is she? If you know your wrong girl, look on me. Art thou the slave who with thy breath has killed my innocent child? Yeah, even I am. No, not so, villain. Thou hast belied thyself. Here stand a pair of honorable men. A third has fled a lot of hands in it. I thank you two for my daughter's death. Record it with your high and worthy deeds. It was bravely done if you may think of it. I know not how to pray your patience, yet I must speak. Choose your revenge yourself, and put upon what penance you invention upon my sin. Yet sinned I not by mistaken. By my soul, or I forget, I will bend it under any heavy chains this good old woman doth injure me to. I cannot bid you bid my daughter live. That were impossible. But I pray you both possess with the people here. I'll hang as if she died, and if your love ought to labor in sad invention, hang an epic half above her too. My brother hath a daughter, almost a copy of my child that's dead. Give her the rights you should have given my child that's dead, and so that is my revenge. Oh, madam, your kindness both bring tears to me. I embrace your offer and dispose henceforth for Claudia. Tomorrow morning I will expect your coming. Tonight I take my leave. Ma'am, this place of fear, the offender, <laughs> did call me Ness. I beseech you, so let it be remembered in her punishment. I thank thee for thy cares and honest things. Your most painful to speak like my word and your and I praise God for you. There's for thy pains. God save the foundation! <laughs> Go. I discharge thee of thy prisoner, and I thank thee. <laughs> Until tomorrow morning, lords, farewell. Tonight I will mourn with you. Ursula, deserve well at 
my hands by poetry to the speech of Beatrice, who is then writing me in praise of Sonnet in my beauty, <laughs> in so high a style, Ursula, that no man shall come over it. For, in most comely truth, thou deservest it. So that no man come over me, shall I forever keep below the stairs? <laughs> Thy wit is as fast as the greyhound's mouth that catches, and yours is the prince's foil, which quite but hurt not. I pray you call Beatrice, I give you the bucklers. Give the swords, we have bucklers of our own. If you use them, Ursula, you must put in the pikes with a vice. They are dangerous weapons for maids. Well, I will call Beatrice to you, who I think has left. And therefore will come. <laughs> Which 
ere we may lighten our own hearts and our wives' heels. We'll have dancing afterwards. <coughs> First, my word, uh, play some music. <laughs> Pedro, thou art set, you're sad. Go, get away, leave. <laughs> <laughs> Your sister, Jane, is taken back in flight, brought back with cameramen to Messina. But what of Jane? Think not on her till tomorrow. I'll devise the bravest punishments for her. Strike up, pipers! <laughs>